Hi guys and welcome to this hour lesson on data transformations for the Further Maths course. Now it is really good to see you and I've had a little bit of a break recently due to a baby. So if you are new to my channel and are watching in these strange times then do me a favour and please subscribe or alternatively head over to mathsguru.com if you're not already there to be able to search and watch all of these videos in a pretty ordered way. Now we are going to start off with this very short introduction and then we're going to get into the exciting stuff of data transformation. So as I say here, as normal, by the end of this lesson, hopefully you will understand about the circle of transformations and know which transformations to use with a given scatter plot. And obviously we're just going to identify them now and then use them next time. All right, this is a brand new topic. And so basically there is no recap and we go straight into the idea of, well, not all data is actually linear. The great thing here is that uh, in all the previous chapter where we did regression analysis, all that data was linear and we did ended our regression analysis, we came up with equations, we could interpolate, extrapolate, and all those exciting things. But mm, what if we end up with curved data, data that actually goes like this, or like that, or like this, or like that. Well, the good news is we have a method in Further Maths to try and, where possible, linearize that data. So if we can actually turn a curve into a straight line through whatever method we'll talk about in a moment, then we can go on and do our regression analysis and write reports and do all sorts of exciting stuff. Now, this beautiful table here, or this diagram here, has been extracted from the Cambridge Further Maths Unit 3 and 4 textbook. And thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to use sections of your book for my videos. Greatly appreciated. And if you aren't using the Cambridge books, you really should, because they are quite a phenomenal. And no, I'm not being sponsored by Cambridge. Now, building on what we had before, we already know about scatter plots, we know about regression lines. This is just a table. Stick it out, put it in your summary book. Do what you need to do that says, well, if we have a certain amount of data, if we have data going in a certain sort of pattern or a direction, then we can use a number of transforms to turn it straight. Now the good news is, or maybe the bad news for you guys, is there's not just one transform. There are a number to choose from. Why? I hear you shout at me. Well actually the reason being is that different transforms will make the data more or less linear than the others. So what I'm saying is we're going to try and find the right data transform that makes the data as linear as it possibly can. Nobody in the world is telling me that I can turn data like this into a beautifully straight line. We can just make it a little bit more straight. So looking at an example here, if I had, for example, data that seemed to curve in that direction, then it says here that there are three possible transformations that you can use to turn that data straight. y squared, log x, and 1 on x, otherwise known as the reciprocal of x. Now many of these will be a little bit new to you or you won't have seen them in this format or this context. If you're doing further maths and specialist maths and maths methods, you'll know about logarithms already. But we have done a little bit about logs previously in the course, log base 10. Now if you're not sure about that, head on back to a previous video and just sort of watch it again. But for data that curves that way, there are three possible transformations. For data that seems to curve this way in this bottom right hand corner, then I have again three transforms again, a log y, a 1 on y, and an x squared. Now it's really important to note here that the letters x and y are actually talking about a set of axes. This one or this one. So here, when it says a y squared transform, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of our values here on my y axis and we're going to square them. My x values will stay exactly the same. Right? So that's sort of rushing ahead into the next video. This one on x transform, however, will suggest that my y values will actually stay the same, but all my x values will change to become 1 on x. And again, don't rush ahead. This table is going to basically set up the rest of the tables for these videos for this particular chapter. And uh, fingers crossed, we'll be able to be guns at this later. Now, as I say, I've gone on a little bit here. The notes are all downloadable from mathsguru.com. But again, all this is saying is if the data here Let's undo that and actually put a highlighter. If the data here curves in that direction, then we have a choice of three transforms. And again, the choice will either be given to me in an exam question or 
Yep. Or, and there is an or, you'll have to try all three. Or maybe all six. We'll come back to that at another time. But again, another example here. If this curves this way, slightly different from before, we actually only have two transforms. A y squared transform and an x squared transform. Okay, we know all about it now. I am done with this video. I'm going to move on to the next one. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Six minutes. This has got to be an all-time record for me. If you haven't already done so, do the, uh, me a favor and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just subscribing lets me know that people are watching. Never going to get rich from this. Uh, I don't think anyone's interested in watching mass videos, but if you could, that would be awesome. Also, comment and say a hi so that I know you're watching as well. Let me know what you think of the video. Um, otherwise, I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.